everybody. So um, I hope you're doing really well. And um, as usual, progress is never quite as what you want it to be. So let's get on with things. Um, I think uh, Richard, you asked about uh, some more close-up details about the saw vise. I'll try and help you out with that. So what we've got working down from the top here is just space for the handle in there. I don't know what that is. That looks like it's about, I don't know, maybe inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter gap, maybe, or that kind of thing. You can see it's maybe slightly bias in its length there to pinch it at the top. Got two mortise and tenon joints securing those two bits together. Wing nut in here just to pinch it up and a um, hinge at the bottom. I will at some point, I promise, you know, and at some point, that's the big thing do something but you can make improvised um, versions of these just with a couple of bits of plywood and like a piano hinge or a couple of butt hinges at both ends like a spacer block and then an equal spacer block at the top and kind of clamping your saw that way i've used the metal vices and one of those improvised ones and i wasn't satisfied with the metal vice and the improvised ones I found ended up making me a bit too low. But this height is now nice. I can see what I'm doing. Timber's light, which was an advantage I wasn't necessarily thinking of, but it works well. So, um, yeah, during the week, and I was hoping to do it this weekend, but, you know, responsibilities and all. I'm going to take the Atkins that I've been um, restoring and um, sort it out. So if you want to play along, or you're watching this video, there'll be a few things that you'll need. So you need some saw setting pliers. Um, I've got a Somax uh, 250, and I don't know if they make those anymore, but I checked before doing the video, and you can get some made by Spear and Jackson, so that's always an option. Um, I might do a video during the week where we just modify it slightly, because this one I think is like 14 or 15 teeth per inch and the little anvil that strikes across is a little bit too broad and I'd mainly be sharpening up bigger saws for the most part but when I get down to teeth of this size there's always that risk that you could end up not really registering the teeth properly and maybe damaging the saw plate so we'll take a look at that. It shows that it'll only go up to say 12 teeth per inch but I found that at that these pliers in particular, the Somax ones anyway, they, they impart a very minimal set at that point. The, so much so that on a back saw it isn't a problem. And when we get into it, I'll quite often just very like once and once just dress the side of the saw just to make sure it's all nice and straight. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need to do this every time. And when I do the um, sharpening video, um, I'm taking a saw here that's old and I've restored, so I'm going to take a mill file and I'll dress across the teeth and then just check where I am and then I'll get into the shaping of them. And this saw's not in that bad a condition. And if you're going to learn, you, could, you wouldn't do yourself a disservice if you grabbed an old saw, like so. Just do some minimal rust removal. And as long as the saw plate's not bent and it's not really snaggle toothed, you can practice on this. Um, so you'll need that one and also you will need yourself a saw sharpening file off the top of my head I'll try and remember to put some links in but I think this is a 125 mil double double x extra slim I've got such ridiculous names but I noted down the code number which is the barco ones that I use and it's like four um dash one eight eight dash zero five dash two zero dash zero now if you go on any reputable um tool seller's site they are pretty good they will tell you which saw file goes with your saw all right and don't get me wrong i'm not doing mr Masterclass of saw sharpening and the, the biggest challenge for the homewood worker is the frequency if you're always going to be in the shop and you're always going to be making stuff and you're going to be relentlessly going at it, then you're going to get some practice in. But the hardest thing, like most things in life, if you don't do it frequently, you, it either never gets in there, or you, 
they're just too big a gap. So it's one of those times where if you want an excuse to buy a load of old junk saws, here's the time. Um, because you can practice on saw after saw, and if they're like my buddy over there, I just showed you that we're all rusted. Um, you know, if you've got to throw them away, as sad as it may seem, it's not the end of the world, you know. Um, there's bigger crimes, it's not like you're out clubbing seals. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the woodworking stuff. Um, I'm going to go into some off-topic stuff really quick. Um, if you don't want to see that, just stop, tap out, move on, I get that. So, boring stuff today. Um, all of my videos seemed about me going to the dump, right? I went there again today and it was really busy. I took the dog out for a walk yesterday and um, it was quite quiet there because it was just chucking it down with rain. And I went there today thinking, oh cool, that'll be quiet, but it was just very, very busy. And fine loading bits up. I saw a guy there we've done some work for in the past, I had a nice chat with him. We're just loading the skip up with you know garden waste and I've got some stuff which is like non-recyclable. And you walk up, say this this workbench area is like um, the skip, you've got like steps off to the side here and these skips are long and naturally when I use the skips I think to myself well most people, we're human beings, we're lazy, people get to the top of the stairs and just lump it over so right at the back of the skip it's empty. So I naturally always walk right to the end, chuck it in there because in my head for a practical person just feels like that's what you do. Um, so I'm there, I've got my hands full of plastic rubbish, like old garden containers. I'm walking up the steps behind um, this lady, carrying up, she's taking her own sweet time with this chair, and to be fair, the chair looks a bit heavy. If I hadn't had the stuff in my hands and I could have put it down, I would have offered her some help. But got up there, so she does the classic thing, gets to the top, just lumps it over. And bear in mind, it's wet, slippery metal stairs that we walk up. I'm there thinking she'll just like, you know, she's just chucked hers in that she can walk back like 12 feet. I'm on like stairs, which I don't know, maybe they go, I don't know how many feet in the air. She goes, oh, could you, um, could you walk down for me, please? And I think I'm a lot more assertive now. So I said, uh, no, these stairs are really wet and this is heavy. You're going to walk back. <laughs> and she did, to be fair, and just chucked it in. But it's, I don't know, a people. You know, people drive me nuts, they drive me nuts. And I took the dog out for a walk just a moment ago before doing this one. And we'll get onto something else in a minute, which we'll touch into this, but I like to think of myself as a responsible dog owner. Um, I'm walking up through and I can see someone else walking up. I can see their dog just crouch over. Pretty sure it's laying one down, but I can't see because it's a long way away. I think well, I'm going to be walking back that way. Sure enough, pile of dog mess. I don't get it. I don't get, well, I kind of do. Dog mess is disgusting, but if you want a dog, you pick it up. You pick it up. Okay, people, if you've got a dog, you pick it up. You signed up for it. Okay, the moment you got that pet, you signed up for it. If you can't do it, if you're too lazy, and there was two of them, looked like a husband and wife team out walking their dog, pick up the dog mess, um, drive me crazy. Um, I don't know if it will show yet, but um, last thing I think, uh, before I completely go off my rocker, I'll need to calm down and watch some, watch some televisual entertainment. I noticed from my videos and my general, again, it's very revealing, you do a video, but I really started to look at myself in the mirror and after a shower, I don't want to get too graphic, I was just looking at myself and it was like, if I had to put it into words, I looked like a flat-chested woman in a third trimester. It was just not a good look. So for about a month now, I've been watching what I've eaten, kind of been doubling down on that, but not too hard. Um, and I, it's difficult to know, I've probably lost about a stone to three quarters of a stone within a month, which I'm pretty pleased about. I used one of those free apps you can get on your phone um, and that I get, I'm walking an extra 6,000 steps a day. I'm not into that whole thing of I want to know every step because it's like, well, every step I was doing before was never burning off enough, you know? 
So I'm thinking, right, actively I need to make that effort. And yeah, I'm doing okay with that. Whether I can be doing it all the time, but I need to be disciplined. I'm, you know, I'm in that time of life now where it's like, you know, people, if you're in a lucky enough situation to maybe save for a retirement, I'm trying to make an investment in, in this. So if I'm lucky enough to get to a good age, um, I'm not in bad shape, you know. Whether I can stick to it or not, I don't know. Also started doing some, um, trying to strengthen the core a little bit. I looked at my posture and I thought I've got a bit of a back in my back muscles can sometimes spasm a bit. So I've been doing some hip flexor stretches, getting some strength in the glutes. Um, and yeah, just trying to build up a little bit of that core strength so I don't have that bulge quite so much. But this isn't a fashion show and I told you already, if you didn't want to hear the off topic stuff, then just, just cut the video. Um, I could rant on, I've got other topics I want to talk about, but we'll leave that for another day. Um, so yeah, clean up during the week. Again, I think if, you, if you've got this far in the video and you, you genuinely want to sharpen your own sores, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, if you're a home woodworker, just cutting a few joints now and again, you're probably not going to get enough practice to be any good. And I would say, especially if you bought a new saw, like a decent quality back saw, um, and probably, you know, I reviewed some cheap dovetail saws when I was kind of learning the ropes of this again. For a lot of people, they're going to stay sharp for a long, 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 long time. Um, and when they do start losing their edge, um, you, can, you won't have to worry about mill files and saw sets every time. You can just tickle them with a file. And depending on how excited you are as a home woodworker, I reckon your average person might get away with it for six months. You know, especially you've got a dovetail saw, maybe a couple of larger back saws, you know. And, you know, these things do get a bad rap, and I can understand that. And the kind of Japanese pull saws, I've got nothing against them at all. And I wouldn't mind experimenting with them for the sake of the, um, the channel at some point. I've used them, they're absolutely fine, and I can see that attraction where it's like, do you know what? I'm a homewood worker, I've got limited time. Um, as much as it's nice to learn how to care for these, in this case, antique saws or traditionally made saws, and, and get that down, sometimes if you just want to make some furniture for your home, if you're not careful, you can put so many barriers in the way that you end up not doing anything. So regardless of what you might read or watch somewhere, or if your favourite guru says, you know, you need to be doing this and these pull saws aren't better or whatever. It's not a case of stuff being better sometimes. It's like, well, you know, if you were setting up, if you had one of these for just maybe cross-cutting off some softwood or your, your clean timber that comes into your shop, they're like seven or eight pounds. It costs about the same as one saw file. And if you're a homewood worker, these hardened teeth are going to last a long, long time. If you're just bringing in some stuff and doing some rough, rough cross-cutting to length, they're going to last ages. And if you had a few Japanese saws, you can just switch out the blades as and when you want. It's an option. Um, so who knows? I might treat myself with some and give them a go. That's it, guys. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Sorry it wasn't anything more interesting than that. And um, we'll catch you soon.